Most tier lists out there, including our own, have one huge problem. They're based around competitive play, only focusing on the highest ratings. So unless you're a part of this tiny 1%, most tier lists might be completely different from your experience. It's time to shift our focus here, the grind that represents the majority of players. We analyzed a bunch of data from WoW Arena Logs, comparing win rates, first death stats, and DPS rankings from combatant all the way up to 1800 to make a brand new solo shuffle tier list for the average player, giving each spec an adjusted ranking from S all the way down to D tier. Now unfortunately, most ranged DPS are much harder to play at lower ratings. Warlocks and Boomkins have absurdly high death rates, and in most lobbies, being a caster automatically makes you the target. In the world of micro CC craft, this isn't very fun. As a result, we have to shift the majority of our range specs down, with a few exceptions. But not to worry, because there are at least three specs which are still S tier at lower MMR, including one that might be Sleeper OP. Despite some recent defensive nerfs, we still think Marksmanship Hunter is arguably one of the best ranged DPS for any casual player, especially if you want to do more than just solo shuffle. Even in Battleground Blitz, Hunter is an absolute menace and is definitely a spec that can solo carry. Marks has some of the highest impact burst damage in the game, which players at lower ratings are less likely to avoid. We know from over 10 years of teaching WoW PvP that simply doing more damage than your opponents is the most effective way to climb. That's why our class courses are so insanely OP for gaining rating, because they teach you the fundamentals needed to actually reach your potential in easy to follow guidelines that you won't find anywhere else. Skill capped is our name for a reason. We have almost 15 years of experience teaching WoW PvP to over half a million players, helping them reach their rating goals season after season faster than the competition. And no matter what, we will back you up with a rating gain guarantee, where we promise that you will see rating gains while actively using our website. We even offer a 14-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee for those of you who just want to try us out. So after this video, be sure to click the link below for an exclusive discount to get started. For now, back to the tier list. In the past, hunters suffered some defensive problems and were relatively easy to shut down. But now, with nearly twice the defensive CDs and aimed shot casts that are under half a second long with procs, Marks is not only harder to shut down, but now has a significantly lower death rate compared to the past, something we will continue to expect even after recent nerfs. And don't forget that Marks Hunters are the clothy slayers, so those recent buffs to mage specs does make them a good meta counter for the time being. Despite a relatively slow start to the season and some recent damage nerfs too, Beast Mastery Hunter is still a good option for most players across all ratings. Up until this point, BM has had one of the highest win rates in the bracket, while also one of the lowest death rates. This data helps justify the suggestion we give every single expansion, that BM Hunter is consistently one of the best specs for beginners, and now is even easier to play since you are rewarded for just sticking to one target all game and tunneling it down, a strategy which is quite popular at lower ratings. Devastation Evoker is one of the only specs which we actually think gets proportionally better at lower ratings. If we quickly check rating distributions, an absurd amount of dev evokers manage to climb to 1800, even compared to other meta specs like Unholy Death Knights, where far fewer players proportionally reach these ratings. One easy explanation for this difference is burst damage, where evoker ranks number one by a huge margin. Just like Mark's Hunter, evokers are one of those specs which can simply win the game in the blink of an eye, with exceptional burst damage that is less likely to be countered at lower ratings. Remember, if our goal is to solo carry, we're going to need some big damage and devastation checks every box as a true damage threat, with the right amount of burst to actually win games alone, all while being relatively forgiving as one of the tankiest casters in the game. Despite their popularity at higher ratings, we think that Affliction Warlock moves down half a tier for the average player, for a few reasons. The first being that it has the highest death rate in the game, while also having a relatively weak win rate up to rival ratings. Now, despite the fact that Warlock got a recent buff to their passive defense, Affliction might continue to suffer from getting trained. If you aren't good at fake casting for precog, you might not have the best time. Couple this with the fact that Affliction recently got some massive nerfs to its win condition, it's going to be a bit harder to solo carry compared to the past. Despite this, we think the Warlock class is overall pretty strong. But right now, Destro simply falls behind in both sustained and burst DPS, losing out to Affliction in both categories. The saving grace is that it is the Warlock spec that needs to cast the least, having the overwhelming majority of its damage coming from instant casts when playing the standard Hellcaller build. So from a mechanical perspective, Destro is actually the easiest. Demonology is a total wildcard since it not only has a small sample size in the data, 
but until recently had three different bugs that were causing reduced pet damage. Yes, that's right, Demo had been bugged the entire first month of the season. And after some buffs for the third time in a row, Demonology is looking quite promising. But before you get too excited, even if Demo winds up being OP, it might not be best for beginners, since these days it has to hard cast far more than any other spec in the game, and is a really easy target to bully for any melee cleave. Moving on to mages, we think Frost absolutely gaps both Arcane and Fire up to 1800. Frost simply offers way more control and is way better at dealing high impact damage, especially after a huge list of buffs we saw to the Frostfire hero build, which helps balance out its damage profile. While its win rate isn't great, it definitely has a convenience factor baked into its mobility and the fact that you can do high DPS without needing to cast at all. Arcane and Fire definitely gets worse at lower ratings, having abysmal win rates before their recent buffs. As far as Arcane is concerned, this really doesn't surprise us. We think this spec will feel a bit jarring to play for most players, since it's incredibly challenging to play. High rated players sometimes make this spec look easy, but if you don't have great game knowledge and mechanical skill, Arcane might feel a bit lackluster. On paper, Fire is actually the second easiest mage spec to play, especially after receiving buffs to multiple major abilities, including Pyroblast, Scorch, and Ignite, which were combined with the nerf to Glass Cannon, which is no longer required to play. We still think Fire Mages will have frustrating matchups into Hunters, but will feel way more playable overall, especially with more instant cast damage. Moving on to our remaining hybrids, Elemental Shamans and Balanced Druids suffer some overlapping problems, which make them a touch weaker in the grind to rival. Boomkins continue to have one of the highest death rates in the bracket, even with a better defensive kit than ever before. And while Ellie doesn't die nearly as much, it simply lacks high impact damage and can't really close out games by itself, but instead playing more of a support role. Augmentation suffers similar problems, but to a more extreme degree. We've mentioned in the past that Augmentation is a difficult spec to rank on any tier list by virtue of simply being a support spec. In the right lobby with skilled players, Aug can be OP, since it scales with the strength of its partners. The grind up to rival is simply too unpredictable, and Devastation is a far better option overall. The only hybrid that has really surprised us is Shadow Priest, as we found out that it actually has one of the highest win rates up to rival, despite the fact that we've consistently ranked it as a difficult spec. The other thing that shocked us is Shadow's death rate, which is similar to Devastation Evoker and Marksmanship Hunter, two specs which people consider quite tanky. As it turns out, the Void Leech hero talent is pretty damn good, adding a ton of passive self-healing to the former victim spec. Now, this doesn't mean that you're never going to get trained, but at least you'll be able to take some hits. And now with a fresh set of damage buffs, Shadow is definitely in a position to be quite strong across all ratings, even if it is harder to play. So despite having a steeper difficulty curve, Shadow Priest might actually be sleeper OP up to rival ratings, but in general, we think that most ranged DPS will feel at least half a tier lower for the casual player, since they can be harder to play under pressure. Before we break down the melee meta at lower ratings, there's one myth we need to dispel. It's that melee have it easy, since apparently you don't suffer as much from being pressured. This isn't exactly true. Take a spec like Fury Warrior for a second. Sure, it technically has an easy rotation, in fact much easier than what we think is the best melee, but what most people don't actually realize is warriors die a lot in solo shuffle. Yes, even more than fire mages. Despite the fact that warriors are a good comfort pick for many players, they are part of a handful of melee which simply lack the ability to stay alive by themselves, which is something that we think truly makes a spec slightly better for the average player. Warrior is still a great option at low MMR, but we can do much better in the current meta. With that in mind, can you guess which melee dies the least? It's Unholy Death Knight, which not only has a low death rate, but also ranks top 3 in win percentage for all melee DPS. What is truly carrying Unholy this time around is just how powerful its cooldown stat can be, doing over 10 million damage passively just through pets alone. And even though DK damage was recently nerfed, it was absolutely gapping other DPS in the overall damage rankings up to rival anyway. Unholy DKs can suffer a skill creep problem where higher rated players are just infinitely better at abusing its weaknesses, being quick to CC pets and effortlessly managing the execution tests DKs are known for. But at lower ratings, Unholy DK can be an absolute menace, cleaving everyone down with damage that seems unhealable. So with a high win rate and low death rate, Unholy will actually be half a tier higher for most players. This might come as a shock, but we actually think Frost DK is marginally better at lower ratings. It even has a similar win rate to Arms Warrior, a spec that we think is objectively better. The problem with Frost DKs at higher ratings is that they are a complete gimmick. If you're able to understand their win condition and have a consistent defensive response, it's no problem dealing with their jankiness. But at lower MMR, players tend to trade CDs less efficiently, or simply not trade at all, which means being a gimmick can actually be an advantage. 
Now, if there's one spec we actually think is sleeper OP at lower ratings, it's actually Windwalker Monk. Just like Shadow Priest, we were shocked to see the data. Monks have one of the highest win rates out of any melee DPS up to rival ratings, but how? Well, these days Windwalker is very well-rounded, having more of a brawler playstyle. In the past, it was more hit and run, but now it's more like a Fury Warrior with better defensive cooldowns and stronger bursts. Even though it might lack some finishing power, we actually think the spec is still a really great choice for beginners due to its bulk. With a good mix of passive and active defensives, Monk can be super tanky. Feral Druid is the last melee that we will have on the S tier, and even though it does have a steeper learning curve, its damage is just so insanely good. And looking at the numbers, Feral has one of the highest win rates in the game, a trend we expect to continue. Now, if you're wondering why Feral is continuously ranked as one of the hardest specs in the game, it's because it has a very unintuitive damage rotation centered around Blood Talents. Our Feral course teaches you how to play around this proc and how to correctly sequence all of your abilities. All of our courses also show you how to do maximum burst, which as we mentioned, is a key part of solo climbing. Moving on, between all three rogue specs, we think there is one clear option that is worst for beginners. While the win rate for sub is actually slightly higher up to rival ratings, we still think assassination might be an easier spec to learn if you are new to the rogue class. In many ways, it's just an easier version of Feral Druid, having lots of consistent damage based around AoE pressure. Sub Rogue might be the best rogue spec overall, but it has such a unique playstyle that makes it a bit more challenging for players to learn. Still, with great consistent damage and with one of the lowest death rates, it's a better option up to rival ratings these days compared to the past. That leaves Outlaw, which we think is the worst spec up to rival, having an abysmal win rate at these ratings. Back when we were talking about ranged DPS, we mentioned that some hybrids on average feel a bit worse to play at lower ratings. So does the same hold true for Enhancement Shaman and Ret? Unfortunately, yes. Because the meta is so fast right now, healing reduction effects are disproportionately strong. And if you're like Rep Paladin who lacks Immortal Strike, you're going to need to rely more on your finishing power, which is currently the biggest issue the spec faces. Enhancement Shaman is in a very similar boat. Your path to victory is not as fleshed out as other melee, and you're pigeonholed into playing more of a support role than anything else, all while being one of the easiest targets to train. That doesn't mean you are completely screwed playing these specs in solo shuffle, but you're going to need to rely more on utility than anything else in order to carry. That leaves Survival Hunter as one of two remaining melee, and unfortunately, we do think this spec does get marginally worse at lower ratings. Despite the fact that its win rate has actually been quite high so far this season, we think recent defensive nerfs will make this Hunter spec a bit more challenging to play. Unlike Marks and BM who can safely deal damage from a distance, the fact that Survival needs to constantly push in makes any defensive nerf twice as punishing. On top of this, the spec is just mechanically a bit more challenging, which is why more often than not, it's often one-tricked. Players like Big Mechs might make survival look easy, but it didn't come without missing a few traps along the way. That leaves DH as our last melee spec, which is honestly a bit of a wild card after some recent buffs. Historically, Demon Hunter has been an appealing option for beginners, but over the years, its skill floor has gradually gone up, especially now while its damage seems way lower than in the past. DH is another case of a melee spec simply lacking good finishing power. You can't just win the game anymore with a simple stun I-beam combo. That brings us to our adjusted rankings for melee DPS. Warriors are definitely worth monitoring for now as recent defensive buffs could actually help their survivability issues. And with any future damage buffs, we could definitely see arms make a giant comeback. Overall though, the shift in melee performance up to rival ratings isn't quite as dramatic as what we saw with ranged DPS. The healer meta is where things really start to get interesting. Preservation Evoker, which was one time considered the best healer in the game, has an abysmal win rate up to rival. We weren't lying when we said Preservation of Ochre is one of the hardest healers to play. Unless you are already super experienced at healing and know your spec inside and out, Prez of Ochre can be a very overwhelming healer to play. For most players, there are going to be at least two much better options for the grind to 1800. As it turns out, Holy Paladin, which we ranked as one of the easiest healers to play, is also the most dominant up to rival. Not only does Holy Paladin have the highest win rate out of any healer, but it is also the healer most likely to reach 1800 by a considerable margin. It just goes to show what a few buffs can do to elevate a spec. Anyway, according to multiple metrics, Holy Paladin might actually be the best healer for casual play. With strong reactive healing and some of the best reactive CDs, it's a great healer in an environment where players can be unpredictable. Now, we don't want you to think Disc Priest falls off because without an ounce of doubt, it is still one of the best healers across all ratings and is an excellent choice for anyone wanting to solo carry. Since not only does Disc have some of the best external CDs, but also has enormous damage potential, especially at lower ratings where people are doing less DPS on average. The only problem with Disc is that it is extremely punishing when you fall behind. In order to play this spec well, you really need to stay ahead on tempo. 
Unfortunately, every other healer is going to feel marginally worse for different reasons. Even though it seemed like Resto Druids were unstoppable in Dragonflight, the War Within meta has been a bit unfavorable so far. Some recent buffs might help, but overall, Druids typically do best when the pace of damage is slow enough for Hots to carry. Unfortunately, with several classes doing incredibly high cleave damage, it can be hard to keep up as a Resto Druid even after recent buffs. When you have to spend almost every second of the game healing, it's harder to land those game-winning Cyclones. Shamans have a similar problem. When damage is slightly slower, there's more flexibility to use every ounce of utility, whether it's a Lightning Lasso, Static Field Totem, or even a Hex. Healing alone just doesn't cut it, and right now, Resto Shamans are simply outclassed by the other meta healers, even after recent buffs too. That leaves Holy Priest and Mistweaver Monk as our last two healers, and one of these might be better than most people think. We were absolutely shocked to discover that Mistweaver has the third highest win rate among all healers up to rival ratings, beating out Druid, Shaman, and even Evoker. How could this be possible? Well, for one, Mistweaver has some very underrated single target healing, but only if it is not getting punished by CC and interrupts. It's possible that at these ratings, players are more likely to train one target from start to finish while completely ignoring the healer. If that's the case, then Mistweaver might be better than most players realize, since its key weakness is less likely to be exploited. Unfortunately, we can't say the same about Holy Priest. Rotationally, Holy Priest is quite easy, at least on paper. Almost all of its heals are reactive, which simply means reacting to damage as it happens, which we think is a bit more intuitive as far as healers are concerned. The main problem so far in The War Within is that Holy Priest's healing output isn't strong enough to rely on instant casts alone, and Holy Priests often need to spam heal in order to keep their teammates alive. It might be less of a skill issue and more of a numbers issue after all. That brings us to our final healer rankings, where all but two healers have gone down in relative strength. After buffs in late September, Holy Paladin might actually be the best overall healer for 99% of players, even seeing a solid performance in the recent AWC Cups. And despite being a mechanically easy healer, Holy Priest is simply lacking the output to be competitive in this high damage meta. What we learned today is that some specs are just harder to learn, which can make them less viable for the majority of players. Right now, every spec in the game is capable of reaching rival ratings, even if it means putting in a bit more effort. Healing is definitely not easy right now because damage is so stupidly high. If you aren't doing your rotation perfectly, you will struggle to climb. Last expansion alone, we helped thousands of healers just like you hit their rating goals. Like Gizmo here, a resto druid hard stuck at rival with over 5,000 games played, who gained over 600 rating in a few weeks just by using skill cap. Our damage and healing courses save you weeks or even months of your time, condensing down everything you need to know into bite-sized videos. You don't have to be scared to sign up because we have a rank-up guarantee that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. So if you are serious about climbing, visit the discount link below to get started. Anyway guys, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.